We're joined by Odyssey NFL insider Jason LaConfora, host of the Odyssey original podcast, In the Huddle, with Brian Baldinger. I know that name. And uh, Carl Dukes covering the entire NFL. Here he is. Uh, happy holidays, Jason. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you guys? We're doing fantastic. We're getting ready for this sort of measuring stick Monday, if you will. And I, I, sure. I right, I, I know that 49er fans feel like there are no measuring sticks left, but if there is one, this is the team. So how do you see this matchup? Well, I, you know, hopefully it, it lives up to the hype. Um, I have some reservations about the Ravens being able to hold up their end of the bargain in terms of making this, you know, game of the year or something like that. I mean, I, I think the 49ers right now have a lot of things going for them that perhaps the Ravens don't. Certainly they've got home field advantage. They've got some superior health. Um, I think they're in a little better form than the Ravens. Uh, but we'll see, you know, uh, it, it should be a heck of a game. Um, I, I just think right now San Francisco's a little bit in their own class, especially when they are at home. Um, but you know, look, the Ravens have surprised me before and maybe they'll surprise me again. Ravens are a good team. They're really well coached. You're you live in that part of the world. Um, you know, I know people would be like, "What?" But I think Keaton Mitchell uh, losing Keaton Mitchell is a major loss. Yeah. No, it's huge. Um, he and Lamar Jackson in the same backfield is. Uh, you're talking about two guys with um, world class twitch and amazing speed, and they turn broken plays and losing plays. Um, not only into just survival plays, but into big plays for you. I mean, they, they turn five-yard losses into 25-yard gains, and there's not too many people who can do that. And there certainly aren't too many on this football team who can do it. And when you look at the Ravens offensively, and J.K. Dobbins was supposed to be that guy, and they, he got hurt again very early in the season. And then, you know, Keaton Mitchell comes back from his injury situation. He burst on the scene. He gives them explosion and big plays again because, oh, they've lost Mark Andrews, their tight end, so they've got to get chunk plays somewhere. And now they lose Keaton Mitchell, and they're back to Justice Hill. And at the same time, they're rotating left tackles and right tackles, which if you've got four tackles, it's kind of like two quarterbacks. You don't have any. And Ronnie Stanley makes a lot of money, and Ronnie Stanley used to be a Pro Bowl, all-pro tackle, but he hasn't played like that in quite some time. And he's had uh, a multitude of injury issues. And right now, he can't anchor. He's got a bum ankle. He's got a bad knee. He's getting pushed all over the place. And that's against, you know, average guys, um, not against this group. So, And then Morgan Moses on the other side is more of a run blocker than a pass protector, and they're subbing him out as well. So I know that Armstead's probably not playing in this game, right? And so you're down one of, you know, the elite run stuffers. But the guys on the edge are going to be an absolute handful for the Ravens. And I think Steve Wilkes will be able to mix and match, swip, you know, swap guys out, look for different matchups, run some stunts and twists. Uh, I think the Ravens right now are very vulnerable on the perimeter. Their perimeter pass rush is not good right now, and they can't stop other people from rushing their quarterback. Jason Lockin for with us here on Willard and Dibs. Larry is in for Dibs. Jason, it's it's interesting to hear because you know your uh, our listeners may not know you host in Baltimore every day. It's interesting to listen to you talk about this team. Do you even think that they're the class of the AFC? Um, I think they have been. Are they ascending? I think is the question to ask yourself. I think their defense is peaked. I don't think Jadavion Clowney of October is Jadavion Clowney of January. I don't think the Kyle Van Noy of October and late uh, late October, early November is the Kyle Van Noy you're going to get from here on out. Um, you know, Adafi always an ascending player, and he generates pressure, but he, he doesn't close. He, he, he went through an entire Big Ten season picking on Big Ten right tackles, didn't have a sack. He does a lot of things to generate and, and help you um, produce pressure he doesn't clean it up and right now other than justin matabike who's having an aaron donald type season no nobody else is generating pressure and you could look at this team and say they're leading the league in sacks you could look, look at them the last four weeks and say they're 25th in sack percentage like what which is the real them you know uh so yeah i think they need to go out and sign a justin houston i think they need to go out and sign an indomitian suit because you've been able to run on them all season but nobody does it because they're up 
three scores at halftime. No, there's no volume. And the teams that have gotten even a little volume running the football against them have found a lot of joy and not just running on the outside, but running it right up the gut. Um, so I, I, I think the numbers, uh, the, the, the coordinator's done a great job, McDonald, and he's covered up for some warts. But right now their de facto number one corner has not played very well this season and definitely hasn't played well the last two weeks. That's Sean McVay. He was picking on him mercilessly. And the edge rushers are starting to look old and like they kind of are who we thought they'd be, which is guys built more for 12 games than 18 plus. So we'll see. You know, I, it's not to say that they won't have a great scheme and it's not to say that they won't step up, but I, I think they're getting a very different challenge here than what they've seen uh by and large. The Ravens' backup tight end is Charlie Kohler, and if people don't know that name, he was Brock Purdy's tight end at Iowa State, and he was asked this week about Brock, and he said, hey man, he thought he was always pretty good, but he didn't see MVP necessarily coming in his future. Um, what do you think, Jace, of uh, of Purdy? Is he going to win the MVP if he has a big night Monday night? Would you, would he get your vote? Um, I, I, I don't know that he'd get my vote, and that's not taking anything away from him or degrading what he's done. Uh, but I think Trent Williams is the MVP of that team. So, um, but left tackle is not going to get it. But I think if you, if, if you know, you gave Kyle Shanahan truth serum, that who do you have a better shot winning a Super Bowl without? I mean, I, maybe he says Purdy, but maybe he says Trent Williams. And we saw what that thing looked like without Trent Williams, and, and it all started to crumble, and the margins got real thin all over the place without him. So, and then you've got so many positionless players. I mean, it is the perfect system, and he's perfect for it, and he's great. And he's one of the best quarterbacks in this league. He's also in one of the best situations in this league. Like, I don't even know who the second most important offensive player is for the Baltimore Ravens. Nobody does. Some people would say it's the center, Linderbaum, who's like, I don't know, maybe the third or fourth best center in the AFC. Like, he's a good player, but come on, he's a center. Like, you're going to tell me Kevin Zeitler, their right guard? Like, nobody's having a season for them. Nobody. Andrews hasn't played football in a month, not going to play football for another month. Like, Odell Beckham's had, like, two and a half good games. You know what I mean? Zay Flowers is really small, and he's getting beat up, and he's a yak guy. He doesn't make plays downfield. Nobody does in this offense, really. So it's all Lamar Jackson, man. And now he doesn't even have tackles. He doesn't even have, he doesn't have an offensive line. And people are telling me they're the best team in football. Well, I think he's got a whole hell of a lot to do with that, probably more than any other individual player has to do with that for their team. So if this is one of the best teams in football, and if they do get the one seed in the AFC, and we don't even know who else on that offense is really any good, and it's his first year in a new system, I don't know, man. I, 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 I think there's something to be said for that. Jason, can I can we dig into that one a little bit? You don't need to tell anybody here in the Bay Area the about the importance of Trent Williams um, obviously, it's best left tackle. They run off left tackle all day long, and, and, and they, they they win a bunch. Larry has pointed, though, to even just two plays when Sam Donald came in last week, and all of a sudden everything didn't look the same. That's a super small sample. But what what we haven't been able to do is compare what you just said to to what if, if Purdy wasn't there. Um, you know, we feel like we saw it a little bit last year when Jimmy Garoppolo – was was barely able to get to 20 points a game, and, and, and this is 30 points a game. So I guess this would be my question. Um, a lot of great quarterbacks have a lot of great, important players around them, but why does it feel like we only hold that against this quarterback when we get to an MVP-type conversation? How do we even know it's been held against them? I mean, he might win the MVP. I think there's a lot of people clutching their pearls about something that hasn't happened. I mean... Everybody's talking about him as an MVP candidate. He's the betting favorite. You know what I mean? Like, this kind of reminds me of, of, like, Saban saying, you know, oh, my God, you know, nobody thought we could win and we won. Well, I don't know. Everybody's kind of saying you've got a really good shot to win. Like, you're, the, you're literally now the betting favorite. But it should be a so runaway, just, Jason. It should be, like, uh, if it stays the way it is now, it should be a runaway. Well, it might be. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, look, again, I, I, it should be, could be, would be. I, I, we're still – what, uh, three games away from having all the data that anybody's going to have before they make this vote. But I, I do think people are getting all over their skis about like him, him being, him being knocked. Like I, he, he's one of the five, six best quarterbacks on the planet. Like, and no one's ever going to agree on who the order, you know what I mean? Like there's never, and, and even if they agree, who's, who cares? It's just one person's list. But like, 
I, I think he's getting his flowers, man. I mean, if, if you're if people are knocking him or saying he's not one of the five best quarterbacks on the planet and he's not one of the two or three most worthy people of the MVP award, then they're the idiot, not you. But like, I kind of think he's 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 getting his due. He's a pretty special, uh, pretty special player, and we're going to find out. We're going to find out when the when the voting comes in. Um, one of the things I read uh, from Warren Sharp this week that I thought was kind of interesting is the Ravens struggle um, because they kind of go with lighter boxes in the in, you know against the run and two teams that have the fullback and the halfback on the field together like the Niners do twenty one personnel twenty two personnel they're struggling to stop the run. Um, what do you think, you know, Jason, I mean, are the Ravens going to be able to stop the 49er run game in this game? Uh, I think it's going to be a real problem for them. Look, I don't think they're beating Miami next week for that same reason. Huh. Um, they're bo- bottom four in the league defending pitch plays. We know how many, you know, what this offense does with pitch plays. And they've also, I mean, the real dirty little secret is you can just run right up the gut, gut on them. Arizona did it, and Connor wasn't even playing in that game. It was the DiMercato kid. And I got people telling me that, that Michael Pierce has had a great game, and I'm like, well, he got a couple pressures, but he also got unmasked in the run game. They just had to stop doing it because they got behind by 17 points, which is what the general you know, script has been. Um, you put the other team that far behind, they stopped doing it even if, they were, even if it was working for them. So to think the time's working against them. I don't think that'll be the case in this game. So, yeah, I, I, I think as great as Roquan Smith and Patrick Queen are and as great as Justin Matabike has played, there, there is an underbelly. Go watch the first ten plays of the Rams game. I mean, they had to, they had to change their base defense because they couldn't stop Kyron Wong. McVay didn't even play around with it. He pretty much held the sign up and said, I'm going to run the ball on you until you change your base defense. He ran it down their throat six, seven straight plays, and then they started altering their personnel, and that's fine. Now I'm just going to throw it on you. Like, I, I think it's the same kind of po- pick your poison here. I, I think they're in trouble. I think they're giving up 30-plus points in this game, and I think the defense peaked. Jason LaConfora, Odyssey NFL insider with us here on 95.7 The Game. It's Willard and Dibbs, and Larry is in for Dibbs. Jason, uh, another host on our station earlier, they were talking about the career of John Harbaugh and, and saying, uh, what if after 17 years, if it were to happen, if Kyle Shanahan – were to have the same resume after 17 years. In other words, the Niners would have one Super Bowl and they would make the playoffs seven out of the next 10 years, but but just one, just one Super Bowl. What would you tell 49er fans? Is is that is that a birdie? Is that a par? Is that a bogey? Like would would you would you take that if you were a, a Niner fan? I don't know. I kind of feel like that's like art, you know what I mean? Like the way I might see that painting is a little different than the way you might, you know, what were the circumstances? Were they the one seed? You know what I mean? And seven of those, six of those seven years, but only reached the championship game once and only the Super Bowl one other time. Like, it's hard to say in a vacuum. Um, but there aren't that many. Look, I, I, I go on the radio in Pittsburgh every week and, and I hang up the phone and I want to vomit on my shoes. There's not that <laughs> many guys who are really good at this. There really aren't. There's not that many. Yeah. There's not that many that you would want to cling to for five years, let alone 10, let alone 15, right? So when you got one, I would try really hard to make, you know, to embrace it, to, to take your head out of your cocoon and look around the rest of the league and go count the Brandon Staley's and the Arthur Smith's and there'll be another collection of Bobos who get hired next year because they got the right agent or they got the right name or their daddy used to be something back in the day. You know, the processes are flawed. The people doing the hiring generally don't know what the hell they're doing and can't get out of their own way. Most of these owners are clueless clowns, and they waste their money, and they run inefficient franchises because they don't know what they're doing. So, I mean, I would say be real happy with what you got there. Um, and, yeah, you got to get the first Super Bowl, too, though. You know what I mean? I, I, that's, that's the other big part of it. Like, until you got one, you don't. And... That'll be the right. That'll be the next sort of that's that's the next sort of referendum or determination on where Kyle Shanahan goes in this pantheon or that pantheon. They they got to win the final game of the year. Harbaugh's done that. You know, I, last night, of course, week sixteen started last night. We got Rams Saints. 
Jace, there's a chance the Rams make the playoffs and we may get Dallas and the Rams in the first round. And after watching Buffalo run the ball down Dallas's throat, watching Kyron Williams do his thing, what do you think? Could the Rams knock off the Cowboys in the first round of the playoffs? I think the Rams would obliterate the Cowboys. I think they'd run the ball 45 times and the Cowboys would have no answer. I think the Cowboys are going to get outside zone to death tomorrow. Um, you want to talk about teams that struggle with a fullback. Go go run any numbers for Dallas against 20 personnel. It's god-awful. It's the last in the league. And they're also last in the league against outside zone by any metric. You want to go You want to go EPA and get new age? We can do that. You want to go yards per carry? We can do that. You want to go yards before contact, before carry? Cover your eyes. We could do that, too. Um, no, when they caught the Rams, they caught the Rams at the right time. And, again, it was one of those games that got out of hand immediately, and you, Dallas didn't get to see any volume in the run game, and Stafford was probably at the right around the pinnacle of him being beat up, and the offensive line hadn't coalesced yet. And I believe that was during the period where Kyron Williams was out as well. So, no, it's a different team now. And Cooper Cup was a shell of himself. So, no, I, I, the Rams are for real, man. The Rams, the Rams are for real. Like, for me, the Rams and the Bills are two of the top five or six teams in football right now. Now, what the matchups become and who plays who will obviously determine a lot of that. But both those teams are running the hell out of the football. Uh, Both those teams have changed their mentality on the fly. Both those offensive lines are playing really good ball, and they've got top five quarterbacks. So, no, I wouldn't want want any part of, of either one. I mean... That might the Rams might be the second best team in the in the NFC, oh, and the wow. Bills might be the second best team in the AFC. I think yeah, you might be right. I don't think it's a crazy statement, Jason. Uh, along those lines, are the Eagles dead? No, 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 they're not dead, and I, I think they'll get their groove back a little bit here against the Giants. That should be a pretty good matchup for them. If it's not, then you know well, that's a different story. But uh, they're certainly not who they were last year, and it's real hard to figure yourself out this time of year. But there's you know, there's enough institutional um, expertise there, and and there's enough smart people in that franchise that I still think they can. You know, I still think they can win that division, and I still think they, you know, will win a playoff game probably at home. And then after that, it might be tough. I mean, after that, they're going to have to run the ball better, defend the ball, the, ball, the, the run better, uh, curtail deep. Deep plays better. I mean, they got, they got things they need to create more pass rush, um, especially from the edge. But, you know, I still think they're going to get at least one home playoff game. And, and once you're in, anything can happen. Chase, I got one last one for you. Black Monday is creeping closer. There's going to be a bunch of, bunch of openings, maybe a dozen, maybe more. Um, the two guys I'm really intrigued by, and I got to get your thoughts on, is Belichick leaving New England? And if so, where is he headed? And is Jim Harbaugh leaving Michigan? And if so, where's he headed? Uh, yeah, Belichick will not be back in New England. Um, there's no no chance that ship is sailed. Um, yeah, that's not happening. And I don't think he's going anywhere. Uh, not as a head coach. I think he'll have an opportunity to be a, a football czar. You know, a, a vice president of football operations, kind of like what his his guy, the Tuna, did late in his career with Miami. But I don't think he's going to be on the sideline. I think Harbaugh would 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 chop an arm off to get a good NFL job. But I don't think I don't think that's happening either. I think he'll be back in Ann Arbor because I don't think he's going to have any other options. Wow. Jason, yeah, that's real interesting stuff. Jason, great to have you, man. Uh, happy holidays to you. We appreciate you. Same to you guys. Enjoy the game. Thank Thanks, you. Jason. Yep, we definitely yeah. will. That was Odyssey NFL insider Jason LaConfora. Make sure to follow In the Huddle on the Odyssey app or subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. 